thank you very much for attending this important event in the digital banking space in the world. And we are going to, I'm going to start my presentation, but before, like Ray said, uh, try to enter your browser in your, in your phone, menti.com, and this code, you know, you would be prompted to enter this code uh, so you enter this code and we will be working interactively at the end of my presentation. So for, for starting, um, I want to uh, tell you some findings that we got through our annual research study that uh, Technicis performed with um, the GMIX program of Stanford University about the status of digital banking in Latin America. Main finding, and this is nothing new, is 90% of the uh, executives interviewed, which is a, a high uh, base of uh, digital banking executives, has this as a top priority. So most of the banks has a top priority. Of course, you know, this is nothing new, but four years ago when we started the study, we had like less than 10% uh, of awareness in this space. So in, in four years, you know, we got here. But it's not uh, what I'm here to talk about. Then we are going to release the, the full report to all the bankers uh, attendees here. Uh, but to, to go in deep to open banking adoption in the in the financial services industry in Latin America. So we found out that there's still a big uh, opportunity to grow here because just 26% of the banks said that they are already um, launching or adopti adopting uh, open banking strategies. So, so there is plenty of, of opportunities to, to go. And, and also, as uh, you know, there is a big awareness of uh, top priority of digital banking. We found out that uh, open banking is also in the agenda. However, not now. It's 40% uh, for the next 12 months, 38% in, the, in, the, in one or two, three years, uh, which leaves, you know, just a 22% for those who are not thinking of open banking um, at all, which is, you know, actually a very high level of awareness in this space. And then, what are the banks thinking of doing with uh, open banking or, or an open API strategy? So mainly 35% to create digital ecosystem and 25% then the, they want to attract more customers. The, the main reason for creating a digital ecosystem, and here is where, uh, you know, the, this world is start to be kind of popular, is because they want to, to offer uh, value-added services, value-added digital services to their customers. Why? Is that so important? Because now, unlikely in the past, um, the customers are savvy. The customers learn from Google, from Apple, from Amazon, uh, from Facebook, and they expect the same level of digital services from their financial institutions. That's why the banks are trying to uh, rely on open banking strategies to anticipate their needs. And how uh, is this digital banking uh, working uh, on three, or, or based in three main rules? Uh, first is frictionless, um, meaning simple uh, way of, of using digital banking. Needs-based, there is convenience. Customers are going to use what's most convenient for them. And finally, open. Open because the banks can leverage uh, embedded third-party services to get better experiences and differentiate themselves, you know, the, the bank, from their, their competitors in front of their customers with an open strategy. 
And this open strategy is mainly a bidirectional integration between platforms. And here's another you know, big word in the open banking space, uh, because platform is what allows the bank to get um, integration from external counterparties and expose, on the other hand, um, the, the integration they got plus their own data and expose it to uh, a third party creating this ecosystem where the platform is the center of the ecosystem. And how, how is this? Well, basically, this is the, the picture of the new um, digital banking environment of the new digital bank. The platform is uh, interacting with the traditional banking data with the customers, with other people, non-customers, in a bi-directional way, with fintechs and also other platforms. In a bi-directional way, meaning they are offering value, but at the same time, they can get value from the rest of the ecosystem. The, 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 the most simple example of this is getting some value from a fintech and offering it to, to their customers. And how this platform uh, may, may work or may be built is uh, with these uh, layers, uh, where there is a user experience layer, a layer that is uh, connecting bank channels, third-party channels, business partners, uh, through an open API layer that is going to get into preprocessors for authorization and authentication, and then digital banking um, facilities or capabilities like geolocation, auditing, scheduling, or, or customization of transactions, and finally getting into the, the products, the core, uh, the core data. So with this architecture, uh, platforms should uh, work uh, and be able to connect or to create or to be the center of these uh, ecosystems that I've been uh, telling you about. And with this platform, the main advantages that the banks get are offering differentiated experience to customers, creating this digital ecosystem that we saw before, and bringing new sources of revenues to the banks. So the banks can explore and create the strategies to serve better the customers, to uh, be part, an active part, a central part, an important part of the ecosystem, which is the key here, and bring in uh, then new sources of revenue to the bank. And these new sources of revenues can come through several use cases that can be an expand offering. Uh, an expand offering is uh, by embed a third-party fintech or, or non-fintech service into uh, the bank's offering to leverage uh, transaction data so we can not only do transactions with our platform, but also understand the current and future behavior of our customers, and also can uh, launch account-based uh, payment on third-party uh, services. A third-party uh, application can embed a bank uh, payment uh, functionality, and so the bank is running somewhere else uh, behind. Uh, the scenes, and, uh, or, or do big bespoke partnerships that could uh, mainly find uh, a partner for the bank that can, um, that can together bring uh, value-added service to the customer. So here is 
you know, the several use cases, also aggregation and open market uh, places comparison, several value-added services that can be performed combining the banking data, or the banking functionality and the banking services with some services that uh, we can get from the ecosystem. And that's, uh, again, platformization and platform is key for that. But also, it's important to have an holistic approach. And what is this holistic approach? Well, basically, since uh, all these value-added services, all these new services are uh, key to the bank, are key to the revenues of the bank, then there should be on top an, a clear open banking strategy, a strong open banking strategy. Then on the bottom, there should be a robust API native platform. And we say native because this is what uh, will allow a bank to make that difference. And in the middle, a strong operating model that combines organization, processes, and governance to uh, create this uh, holistic approach. But uh, uh, up to here, everything looks kind of nice, but uh, in our uh, Stanford report, we found out that the, the executives uh, point out several uh, barriers for open banking. And the main one is the local regulations. Then we have security or internal culture, which, uh, you know, the culture we went over, culture uh, during the awareness of digital banking, and I think that the banks are getting more and more into digital, and now they, at some point, uh, you know, are, are telling us that they know how to handle this uh, this new culture needed to, to go into new markets uh, like the open banking. So, but local regulation is still a big concern. So we may uh, see what's going on in the rest of the, of the world. Uh, the most advanced regulation of open banking is in UK, uh, and it's mandatory for the banks to be open then uh, followed by uh, the European Union, where the PSD2 is, is a standard for uh, also regulating open banking. Australia, for example, um, have uh, adopted a similar ap approach to UK, but with limitations. And then uh, Japan has an interesting model, to opt uh, which is an opt-in model. Uh, so the bank chooses to be regulated uh, by the, the authority, and once they do that, they will need to comply with all the regulations that, that apply, but it's a, it's a volunteer thing. Uh, Canada is uh, exploring this, and U.S., uh, well, we will have an expert on compliance in, in U.S., so uh, in, a, in, a, in one of the sessions here, so he, he will tell uh, a lot more about, uh, about US. Um, and then finally, we find that there is three um, main fields where banks are actively adopting open banking. One is the, a partnership. Partnership is um, mainly integrate with proven B2C uh, use cases without a big technology effort. Then we have open APIs, which is a way that the bank can go towards a big number of businesses and get into their uh, customer experiences, um, you know, offering financial services. And finally, uh, build a new platform is another approach for those banks that need to overcome uh, problems or restrictions that their legacy systems 
are uh, giving. And here in Latin America, we have sort of those approaches with uh, uh, Banco Original, which is uh, a bank, uh, dig a full digital bank in Brazil with more than a million clients, and they uh, they launch open APIs for accounts, credits, uh, credit cards, investments, and payments, and they have balances on Instagram. Um, and in the first uh, launch of their open API, in the first month, they got 400 downloads from their API. So this is the, the, the model of the, of the open API strategy. Of course, this is also uh, a full digital bank, you know, created with a, with a digital banking platform. And then another uh, very important uh, case that we have in Latin America is uh, Banco Patagonia in Argentina, and they uh, mainly made uh, a partnership, a partnership with the largest e-commerce site in the region, which is Mercado Libre, and they uh, were able to sell more than 100,000 credit cards through this alliance. So this is a, you know, a good example that these models that are, are adopting uh, open banking across the, the world is also working in our region. We already have uh, cases and so uh, more and more banks are, are going to enter the open banking space. So, uh, and up to now, I, instead of uh, receiving questions, I will make some questions, and that's why the, the menti.com, uh, because I think that we have a, a, a wonderful audience here, and all of you are thinking or doing or having some you know, conversations about digital banking, about open banking, about the future of banking. So I would like to, you know, to know what's, uh, what's in your mind, what, what is going on in your banks. So we are going to jump into menti.com. Uh, you enter this code and you will be prompted with a question, you know? And so you respond the question and we will see the uh, image here. So, and here we have. Uh, in your opinion, what hits the bank in the next five years? Well, most of you are uh, threatened by the big tech offering. Um, also, the rise of the new ecosystem and the emergence of virtual or challenger banks. So, as we see, you know, those are the three main uh, concerns or opinions that, um, is, uh, that, that, that address the, the problem of uh, hitting the banks in the, uh, in the next five years. Uh, now we are going to go to the next question. And so uh, here you have to you will be prompted again, and we will see uh, in the screen uh, as long as you start input the numbers. Um, what's the status of the open banking strategy at your bank? Uh, so, and we are here, uh, we, we have a clear, let's say, winner <laughs> that the organization needs more than 12 months to offer open banking uh, services. And then we have a, almost 20% that the organization needs more than six months. So at both have some sort of, uh, you know, relation, but, um, you know, um, we at some point uh, uh, agree that uh, open the organization to organize this new open banking strategy is a, a, a very big uh, task that 
we have in front of you, in front of you, well, yeah, you. you. We can help, of course. Uh, next question. It's, uh, what's your bank's game plan approach for open banking? So based on what uh, we saw before of the examples that I gave through a partner, through open up APIs, or uh, build a new platform or, or other. Um, and so, <clears throat> well, that's uh, a trend uh, on open up APIs is the, is the way to go. And, uh, well, build a new platform. Of course, probably those who are uh, in need to overcome legacy, um, legacy restrictions needs to go to, to build uh, a new platform. Uh, so, and finally, the, the partner thing. So, um, this is the last question. And so I thank you very much for being here again and for responding actively to our questions. And thank you very much.